Nobody in this world I won't say salam to. And I, I say that in all honesty. There's nobody I know that I will not give him salam. But I know people that won't give me salam. Why? What did I do? I don't agree with you? And that's what Sheikh Abdullah bin Bay was saying yesterday, the day before yesterday. You know, he said in Mauritania, the ulama, when they differ, that differing doesn't cause them to hate each other. They don't write booklets against each other. Wallahi, they don't do that. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmedna told me he couldn't understand the, he, when he went uh, to the Middle East, he said all these ulama write books against each other and call them mubtida, fasiq, this and that. He said that he didn't know that. It wasn't in his frame of reference. I mean, can't we just disagree and be human beings? You know, we, we don't have to agree on everything. We don't have, really, think about this, people. Is it all that? The moment you enter into your grave, are all those things really going to mean a whole lot to you? The moment you go into your grave, you know, your blood brother from a mother and father, you weren't talking to him. You weren't talking to her. The moment you enter into your grave, are you really, is it, is it going to be that big of a deal? The day that you're resurrected before your Lord, you're not going to want to say salam alaikum to those people to get another ajr. You don't want to lower yourself. You don't want to humble yourself. Even if you're in the right. So what about somebody who gives up arguing, really, and he's wrong? I mean, the, the one who's right gets a place in the, in the best part of paradise. So you should be, if you're wrong, just give it up. But even if you're right, give it up. Who cares? Does it really matter all that much? Does, does it really matter all that much? Is this dunya so important to you? Even though all of us know we can leave it in any moment, in any instant, none of us has any guarantee we'll even have another heartbeat, another breath. Not one of us in this room. I can't guarantee you that you'll reach the end of the day. And you can't guarantee me that I'll reach the end of the day. So is it really worth not talking to each other until the end of the day? You know, really, is it worth that? And I know you've all had this experience because it's a common human experience. We've all, we all share this experience. But isn't it a strange thing? And the sad thing about it is, is that uh, it's the cause of a lot of suffering in families and in the world. It's just a really sad thing. But my advice to myself and all of you is be that one that's willing just to say I'm sorry. Be that one that's willing to go low. Be that one that's willing to just give up your right in order to rectify. Because islah that al-bayn, to rectify between people, it's higher than fasting and praying. All those prayers you're doing on Monday and Thursday, really, three days a week, all those night prayers you're doing, if you gave up all those and just rectified between people, you'll have a higher maqam. It's a higher maqam. I mean, what do you think religion is about? It's just about, you know... Your personal relationship with God. God doesn't need your personal relationship. <laughs> he doesn't need it. It's all for you. So if God's more pleased that you have good relationship with his servants than that you have a personal relationship with him, where should you put your priority? <laughs> Allah doesn't need you to get up at night and talk to him. He doesn't. He doesn't need you to do that. He doesn't need you to fast. He doesn't need you to do any of that. He did it all for you. He gave us all that for us. If you can do that, that's an excellent, wonderful thing, and you'll derive great spiritual benefit from it. But if, like that woman about the Prophet ﷺ who said that she gets up at night and prays, and yet she's cruel to her neighbor, right? didn't benefit her. Prophet ﷺ said those night prayers didn't benefit her. Better they're nice to their neighbor. You know, there's people who have long beard, short robe, and they're mean to all their brother Muslims. And I'm not exaggerating that. If you want a continuum of what's worse, it's worse to be cruel to Muslims than to shave your beard. Because there's an opinion that shaving your beard, like the Sheikh mentioned the other day, there's an opinion that that's makruh. But that's haram to be treating Muslims. The hadith says, Kafa bin mar'i sharra an yahqira akhahu al Muslim. It's enough to consider a man evil that he has contempt for another Muslim. Al Muslimu akhul Muslim, la yadlimu, wa la yakhduluhu, wa la yuthlimu. 
that the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. He doesn't oppress him. He doesn't forsake him. La yathrimu. Infidam is khudlan. He doesn't uh, betray him. I mean, this is, this, is, uh, this is what we're supposed to be doing. 